Hello, ladies and gentlemen. God bless each and every one of you. Y'all have to pardon me this morning. I'm a little out of it. I had a very, very bad night being sick. Uh, I don't know what happened. I just got really violently sick. So you have to bear with me. I'm not up to par, but no matter what, I'm still going to go to church because I think that is so important, you know on a Sunday to get up and go give reverence to the Lord. Um, I, I want to talk about a few things if you have a few minutes. Um, first thing I want to talk about is trusting in God, not putting your trust in man, but putting your trust in God. So, so many people in this world, folks, put their faith and their trust in mankind. And, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with trusting someone. I mean, we all have to at a point in our lives. We trust our parents or our wives, or our husbands, whatever. I'm not trying to make out that we can't trust anybody, but there's a difference between that kind of trust and putting your trust and your faith in the Lord. It's a big difference. And I'll try my best to uh, separate the two. Now, we know if you put your trust in man, uh, even in some good intentions, things happen and they can't come through for you. Okay? You're trusting them to, I don't know, let's say pick you up at the airport on your way back from a trip. And they get a flat tire. They get two flat tires. Uh, or like me, they get violently sick and they just can't get in the car and go. And you put your trust in them to be there. And it wasn't their fault per se that they couldn't make it. But that's what I'm saying. If you put your trust in the Lord, that'll never happen. He will never fail you, ladies and gentlemen. He will always be there no matter what. I mean, he will never leave you stranded at the airport. I know that doesn't make any sense, but you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, too many people today, they do put their trust in man. And it, it's just, you know, I try to try to emphasize so much to people that God will never forsake you. He will never fail you. He will never leave you. We will fail him. Oh, yes, we will. Absolutely. Yes, we will fail the Lord. Absolutely. But he will never, ever, never fail us. It's us that fails him time and time again throughout this life. That I might add, he gives us each and every day we wake up. He's given us another day upon this earth we might not make it to the end of that day but we've woken up and started that day and god's the one that's given us that day uh that that is one thing that that i want to say and you know <clears throat> personally uh i've i've failed and i've stuttered and i've stumbled and and i've tripped and i've fallen uh you know, but I've gotten back up and I've tried and tried again. You know, folks, nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. But don't let a mistake that you make pull you away from the Lord. That's the second thing I want to speak about this morning. Don't let a mistake make you think, oh, I can't go back to God because I, I did this or did that. That's the devil fooling you making you believe, making you think that God would never accept you back because you did this or you did that, whatever, whatever, whatever it was that made you fall away. Don't think for a moment that God will not accept you back. Absolutely. He's there with open arms as I speak. If you've fallen away from the Lord or find yourself getting further and further away, be it you don't read your Bible anymore, you only attend church, and whenever it fancies you, uh, you know, you don't find yourself praying like you used to, uh, you're, you're falling away. You may not have completely 
backslid or fallen completely away, but you're on your way. You're sliding. Let's put it that way. You're sliding away from the Lord. Some might say you're slipping away from the Lord. But for those that think, oh, well, you know, I've done so much. You know, the Lord, he wouldn't want me back. You know, why would he this or why would folks? He most definitely wants you back. He don't want to lose anybody to hell. He don't want to lose anybody to hell. Let me repeat that a third time. He doesn't want to lose a single solitary person to hell. But unfortunately, sadly, there will be many that will go that route. And it is so sad because it doesn't need to be. It doesn't. It just doesn't need to be. But don't let the devil play them games on you. Don't let him fool you and think that you know, God would never accept you back. We've all fallen, ladies and gentlemen. What's the Bible say? We, uh, we've we all fallen short of the glory of God, or we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I'm, I'm a little out of it. I think, it's, I think that's what it is. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that is so true. We all have, every single one of us. I, I don't care how holy you think you are, or how many times you attend church in a week, or how many chapters and books in the Bible you read every day, we've all fallen, folks. We've all sinned. We've all fallen. And yet the Lord is right there to welcome us back immediately. Immediately. I have literally seen people walk away from God because they think whatever it was they did was just too horrific that they didn't deserve God's love anymore. I've actually seen that in my life. Believe it or not, I have. Not many times, thank the Lord, but I have seen and I've known at least two people in my life that have done something that they thought was so horrific. And yes, it was pretty bad, very bad. But folks, the devil has fooled them to believe that God wouldn't want them back. That what they've done is is so unforgiving that it would be a waste of time for them to even ask for forgiveness. I, 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 and it, it just amazes me. And it doesn't matter how many times I've told them, it doesn't matter. God's right there. We've all made mistakes. And then I hear, oh, well, you didn't do what I did. You know, well, yeah, maybe, but I've done sinned. We've all sinned. I heard a preacher one time say that in God's eyes, you know, sin is sin. It says it. Uh, that, you know, stealing a, a, a dollar candy bar from, I don't know, 7-Eleven or wherever is no different than committing assault and battery. In God's eyes, sin is sin. We can't comprehend that being the same. We think one is worse than the other. And that's man's law. Yes, stealing a dollar candy bar is not as bad as an assault and battery charge or burglary or just whatever, okay? In our eyes, there's a huge difference between the two, but in God's, there's not. In God's eyes, it's just, you know, sin is sin. So don't don't let the devil fool you, folks. Uh, it, it, it's a tragedy when he wins. It's a tragedy when the devil wins and he need not win when it comes to things like that. We know in the end, he's not gonna win. We know that. I don't mean it that way, but I mean, he wins by keeping people's minds trapped in that thought that God will never forgive them. And that's so not true, so not true. So we talked about having uh, trust in the Lord, which is of the utmost as a Christian. You need to have that trust. And we talked about if you've fallen away from God, don't let it be permanent. Get back in to church. Get back to the walk that you had with the Lord. You know, it's truly a shame when people do that. And, uh, you know, I've walked away from the Lord when I was younger. I had this notion in my head that I was going to be a rock star. And I know that sounds goofy, and yes, it is, was a goofy thing, but that's what I thought. I thought I could do this, you know, I could do it, and I walked out of church, 
and right into a bar. Not didn't drink. Well, never a drinker. But I mean, I went in and played in bars. I played in nightclubs. I played in college frat parties, uh, backyard parties, uh, anywhere I could make a dollar and or we as the band could make a dollar and we could uh, play and get noticed. That was what was in my mind. And uh, so, I mean, I've done it. I've done it. And only by the grace of God did he give me the time to wake up and come back. Because I, folks, I'm going to tell you, if I would have passed at that time in my life, I wouldn't have made it to heaven. And that's not easy to say, but I wasn't living right. And if you're not living right, you're not going to walk into the kingdom of heaven with that. I can tell you that right now. I don't care what minister in this 